background casually. Very casually, Nizim Ezekiel is going to discuss his life with us, his childhood, adolescent, then a little bit about his old age in this confessional poem called Background Casually. Hello, hello, how are you? This is Hina from Team Walad and today is very, very uh, serious, but I can say autobiographical poetry from Nizim Ezekiel's pen is called Background Casually. It was published in the year 1976 in his poetry collection called as Hymns in Darkness. Nizim, an English poet in English, uh, an Indian poet who wrote in English language, sorry, an Indian poet who wrote in English. He lived from 1924 to 2004. The style of background casually, as I told you, it is a confessional poetry and also an autobiographical poem. Theme, primary theme is alienation. When you feel like a stranger in your own home, when you feel that, uh, where should I go? What should I call home? Where do I belong? You know, that sense of belongingness. That is what Nizim is going to ask himself, is going to ask us maybe, yes. And also struggle for identity. Tone definitely is serious. So let's start. As I told you, there are going to be three sections in this poem. One, about Nizim's childhood. Second, about his youth. And third, about his, uh, you know, more than middle age years, like that. So let's start first with the text. The text is in the blue side and the explanation is here on the white side. Let's start with the text first. I will read it to you. A poet rascal clown was born, the frightened child who would not eat or sleep, a boy of meager bone. He never learned to fly a kite. His borrowed top refused to spin. I went to Roman Catholic school, a mugging Jew among the wolves. They told me I had killed the Christ. That year, I won the scripture prize. Now, the first five lines are written in third person, although the poet talks about himself only. So the poet says that, you know, he sees himself as a foolish, funny child who was born. Nobody thinks that he's foolish. He was told by the people around him. He was made to feel like this, that you are foolish. You are funny. You are clown. You don't belong to us. You are an alien. You know, you should know about the background of Nizim before I continue with the explanation. Nizim belonged to the Jewish community. Jews, you know, in India are rare. But then his family immigrated to India. They were never accepted by any religion. Now, for example, Christians said, you belong to the community who killed the Christ. So we don't accept you. Muslims, they did not like Jews as well. Hindus, they acted very, very rowdy and very, you know, voracious in front of Jews. So he said, although I'm a minority group, but I'm an Indian, right? So let's first listen to his childhood. He says, when I was born, it was like a rascal, a clown, a poet, because he's going to be a poet in future. So he was born. Now, because of poverty, because of living in such circumstances, he was always frightened. You know, our surrounding actually develops our personality. If from the start, I tell my child, you are stupid, he will grow up thinking that he's stupid. And if I tell my child, oh, you are awesome, he will grow up thinking that he is awesome. Similarly, because of his circumstances, Nizim was always frightened. A child who would not eat, who would not eat, whose bones were very weak, he could not sleep. In fact, anything which is considered normal for a child, for example, flying a kite, or for example, spinning a top, lattu. He could not do such things. Now, Listen to this word, borrowed top. Why does he write borrowed top? It shows poverty. He it was not in a position to buy toys, something as cheaper, you know, as a top. So he borrowed it, yet he could not spin it. Why? Because he was always frightened. He was said, you're a rascal, you are a clown. Now, the person changes from third person to first person. Look how he changes the speech from him to I. I went to Roman Catholic school. Now listen to Nizib's schooling days. 
being a jew going to a christian school was very difficult for him as i told you christians bullied him saying that you killed jesus christ then further beyond uh, even more religion will come right now but then here he says that although i was made fun of but i was very sincere at studies because of which i had learned the old testament the new testament by heart and i won the prize at bible recitation okay now the other religions are going to come let's read the text first listen to me a muslim sportsman boxed my ears i grew in terror of the strong but undernourished hindu lads their prepositions always wrong repelled me by passivity one noisy day i used a knife at home on friday nights the prayers were said my morals had declined i heard of yoga and of zen could one perhaps be rabi saint the more i searched the less i found now what does nizim say let's continue what happened with him at school after the christians the muslims also tortured him he says i was boxed in my ears by a muslim sportsman which means a very strong person after that i was terrorized by the hindus although they were undernourished although they were also thin like me but they were absolutely very rude then nizim says that mostly i was passive but once i could not stand their rude remarks and i retorted to violence and i used a knife but he just stops there he does not tell on whom he used the knife what was the result of using the knife he just stops there he says once you know one noisy day i used a knife now from school he comes to home at home on friday nights the entire jewish community it prayed so their house was into prayer during that time his morals were declined basically he says that i was sad i was unmotivated i was distressed i did not believe in religion but then i listened about yoga i thought of zen you know i heard of zen like these are meditations right and then listen to how he writes one in numerics here could one he talks about himself me that can i also be a rabbi saint rabbi is like a a jewish religious leader you can say you know after listening about yoga about meditation about zen nizam says that probably for once it came into my mind that can i also be a motivator can i be a leader a religious leader but sadly the more curious i became about it and i read about it i got more confused i was like i don't have that religious zeal in me no 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 here the theme is religious curiosity next let's move on let's read the text first here in blue 22 time to go abroad first the decision then a friend to pay the fare philosophy poverty and poetry three companions shared my basement room the london seasons passed me by i lay in bed two years alone and then a woman came to tell my willing ears i was the son of man i knew that i had failed in everything a bitter thought now he's 22 the schooling is done with because he was so intelligent he has himself said his parents had this very keen desire to send him abroad to study but because of poverty they had no money no finance and at this time one of his friends helped him for the fare to england so he says i was sponsored my trip was sponsored by a friend but in england it was not like everything was rosy we just hear that grass is greener on the other side but when nizim reached england it was as bad as it could be because absolutely he had a shabby basement room which was not at all luxurious or oh, forget luxurious it was not even basic he was staying like underground basement and there were only three friends that he made in that london basement room what you know who are those three friends philosophy poverty poetry when you are poor you actually philosophize more maybe so he was poor he dwell into philosophy 
and he loved poetry. He started reading it. Two years, he says that I slept alone. I had no girlfriend. After which I did make a girlfriend. A woman came and how your hormones, they increase when you're in love, when you kiss. Nizam says it in a very crisp manner. He does not talk physically here. He just says, my willing ears wanted to hear that, yes, I am son of man. Yes, I am meant to love. Yes, I am meant to be physical. This woman told me all this and I was happy for a little while. But I realized that I had absolutely failed. By this time, I had this bitter thought, this bitter realization that I had failed. Here the theme is self-mocking and pessimism. Let's move on. The text first. So, in an English cargo ship taking French guns and mortar shells to Indochina, scrubbed the decks and learned to laugh again at home. How to feel at home was the point. Some reading had been done. But what had I observed except my own exasperation? All Hindus are like that, my father used to say. When someone talked too loudly or knocked at the door like the devil, they hogged and spat, they sprawled around. When Nizim realized in England that he's a failure, he said, I wanted to return home. But now who will pay for my fare, my return ticket? I don't have money. So to earn some money so that I can reach to India again, I started working on a ship. This ship would take French guns and mortar shells to India and China. I literally would scrub decks here. I learned to laugh. I was happy. And then he could enter India. When he entered India, which means he was home. But the problem was, he said, I did not feel like it was my home. Because he says that although I was well read by now, but had I learned something other than my own annoyance? I was always annoyed. In fact, my father would also keep that critical tone. Again, religion comes here. My father was very critical of Hindus, calling them violent, calling them rude. And, you know, I didn't like it. Probably he says that, what was I doing? Although I was well read, but I was always annoyed. Like my father, my father would say, you're knocking at the door like the Hindu, you're, you know, they hawk, which means uh, if you hawk, if you spit, if you sprawl around, you're just lazy. He, his father would criticize such people as Hindus. Okay, let's move on. I prepared for the worst, married, changed jobs and saw myself a fool. The song of my experience sung, I knew that all was yet to sing. My ancestors among the castes were aliens crushing seed for bread. The hooded bullock made his rounds. One among them fought and taught, a major bearing British arms. Then he says that I prepared for the worst. Basically, Nizam says that till now what was happening was bad, but now what will happen was worst. Why? He says, I married, which was not a correct decision, probably. I changed jobs frequently because I was not happy with my profession. That was also like making myself a fool. And then he says that although my experience helped me and I began to write because I had enough substance to write about. You see how he is mingling his history with writing? Because of course, Nizim is all about writing now. Nah? So everywhere, at every step of his life, he's connection, connecting his hard days with his solace in writing. Then he speaks about his ancestors. He says that my ancestors, just like me, were aliens. He calls himself alien in India. Because in India, we were not Indians. We were not accepted at, as Indians. My ancestors did mealy, menial jobs to survive. Basically, they were very poor. They did menial jobs like... They were oil pressers. Then he says, I remember the hooded bullock, you know, taking the rounds in the field, pressing seeds, right? Then he says, I remember one of my ancestors who was a major in the British army. He fought and taught in the British army. He told my father sad stories of the Boer War. 
I dreamed that fierce men had bound my feet and hands. The later dreams were all of words. I did not know that words betray, but let the poems come and lost that grip on things the worldly prize. I would not suffer that again. I look about me now and try to formulate a plainer view. Talking about that ancestor who was a major in the British Army, Nizam says that this major uncle told stories to my papa about the Boer War in Africa. After that, I had nightmares. I would dream of this strong man captivating me, you know, bounding my feet and my hands. But later again, the poetry comes again as a solace, as a balm on Nizim. Nizim says, later, my dreams were only about words because I realized that anything in the world would betray you, but not words. Because of this realization, I immersed myself in writing poetry. I immersed myself in becoming a writer. So much so that I lost grip of reality. You know, that is why Buddha says that follow the middle path. Do not be very inclined. Do not be very extreme. So now Nizim says that because I was extreme, because I followed that path of only writing, immersing myself, I lost touch of reality. I became a nerd. I completely became off touch what was happening in the world, worldly prize. And this was a mistake I committed, which if given a chance, I would not commit again. Because now I try to be more practical. I try to take care of myself and keep a plainer, pragmatic view. What view? Now listen to the text. The wise survive and serve. To play the fool. To cash in on the inner and the outer storms. The Indian landscape sears my eyes. I have become a part of it to be ob observed by foreigners. They say that I am singular. Their letters overstate the case. I have made my commitments now. This is one, to stay where I am. As others choose to give themselves in some remote and backward place, my backward place is where I am. Here is where Nizim is going to confirm that I am an Indian. What is running inside me is the Indian blood. Here is where he will show love to India, no matter with all its pros and cons, you can say. So Nizim says that this practical view that now I have Im imbibed in me is that wise people survive. Dunya hi wisdom pe tiki vi hai. Wise people survive. They rule over the fools. They control their feelings. The wise can control the inner and the outer storms. This is what Nizim means. Then Nizim shifts to the Indian landscape. He says, no matter the Indian climate is very, very hot. My eyes, they literally burn. But I have accepted myself as a part of India. No matter my Jewish friends or other friends who live abroad think that this, this decision of mine is crazy. They criticize me and this country because I have chosen this country. But let me tell these friends of mine that the way you choose any remote place and call it your home. The way you choose any backward place and call it your home. I choose my India and call it as my home. Here the theme is national identity. Let's listen to some literary devices, metaphor, direct comparisons, a mugging Jew among the wolves. Here wolves are students of other religion. Philosophy, poverty and poetry, three companions shared my bedroom room. So philosophy, poverty, poetry, three companions. This is in fact also an example of personification because they are his friends and also metaphor. My ancestors were aliens. This is also metaphor. Personification example, I did not know that the words betray, words betray, okay? An alliteration, 22, time to go abroad. Imagery to you can feel. I definitely felt when he said that Indian landscape seared my eyes. I can feel the boxer, you know, boxing in his ears. So much imagery there was in this poem, yes? You can go back, listen and enjoy this poem. Few points to ponder. This poem, as I told you, is divided into three sections. Childhood, adolescence, old age. Each section consists of five stanzas or five lines each. And in one of his interviews, Nizim says, 
quote, I regard myself essentially as an Indian poet writing in English. I have a strong sense of belonging, not only to India, but to this city. I would never leave Bombay. It is a series of commitments. With this, we are done. This is Hina from Team Wallet. I hope you liked today's lecture. Take very good care of yourself. Bye-bye.